In the previous American Mahjong Fundamentals videos, I talked about where you can find information on the history of the game and also the art of the game. There are some sets with amazing detail. And Greg Swain has a beautiful book called Mahjong, The Art of the Game. That's a whole other element of the game that's fascinating. So I hope you check that out. That will be in the video called The Tiles. Also in that video, I explain how the tiles become components of the game. The next video goes over blocks of tiles and how to work them together. And then the next video was on working with suits. After that, we talked about the card, the color code, and the number code. That all gets demystified. And just prior to this video, we go over the categories of hands on the card. If you missed any of those, look for a list below the video and you can catch up. American Mahjong is played in two phases. Phase one is called the Charleston. Now we're not gonna get up and dance. We're gonna pass tiles up to seven times. It's kind of like a pass the trash, but one man's trash is another man's treasure. In this video, I'm going to show you an exercise that you can do to master the Charleston because there's a lot of strategy that is involved. We'll go into depth on strategy later in another playlist. I just want to show you this exercise before we get into an actual setup and game where I do the Charleston. I'll be acting as all four players so you can see how it works. But let's get to the fundamentals of the Charleston. Get all your tiles out, give them a good mix. The next thing you want to do is decide if you want to be the dealer or non-dealer. If you're the dealer, you get 14 tiles. If you're non-dealer, you get 13. For this exercise, let's just say we're the dealer. This mimics a drawn hand. 14 random tiles. The next thing we're going to do is build a mock Charleston. The Charleston is when players pass three tiles that they don't want to the other player. We go three tiles to the right, three tiles across, three tiles to the left. That is the first Charleston and it's obligatory. You've got to do all three passes. The third pass, you can do something called passing blind. Passing blind allows you to pass up to three tiles from an incoming pass. And I'll show you examples of that. Once you go through these three passes, then there's the second Charleston, which is optional. Everybody needs to be in agreement as to whether or not to proceed through the second Charleston. If everyone's in agreement, then we do another left. That's called the second left. Then we go across because once you start it, you got to finish it. And then finally, we do right. So it goes like this, right across, left, left across, right. At the very end, there's an optional cross pass where players negotiate up to three tiles. It has to be mutual. So let me show you how it works. We're going to look at our tiles and then we're going to do the first pass.
when you set up your tiles, I believe that it's best to set them in a certain order. Jokers, which we have none, flowers, winds, dragons, and then the numbered suits in order. This will give you a quick glance of the basic shape of your hand. I have seen it where some people might put the matching dragons with the suit. And later, when you've chosen a category or a particular hand, I'd say that's okay. But I think that it reveals only patterns where you're working in one suit, and that is a myopic view. So I would keep the types of tiles together initially. Once you decide on a category or a particular hand, then arrange them accordingly. So when you get your drawn hand, you set them up and then you choose the best category for the tiles you have. One of the keys about playing American Mahjong is to stay at the category level for as long as possible. Try not to be at the hand level until later in the game. And we'll talk more about that. American Mahjong is a game of multiples. Here we have a pair of Norse and a pair of Nines. I think we should build around them. So we have North and Nine. There's only one hand that uses a pair of Norse with a pair of Nines. And that would be in the Winds and Dragons category. The third hand down, North and South with Nines, pairs of Nines. So we could consider that, but I want options. So I'm going to keep the dragons. If we're going to play the wind and dragon category, I want to keep all the tiles for that category. If I'm keeping the pair of nines, I think I'll keep the eight for a consecutive run option. So you want to look at your tiles, building around the multiples, gather tiles that support the multiples, and that will reveal tiles for passing. So we have these tiles that we can use for our first right. Let's pass a four, one, two. This way, well, either way it's gonna be risky because we have one, two, and two, four. If we did the two here, we would have a one, two, four. Maybe that's a little better because then we have a two, three, and two suits for the next pass. So you always want to think about your next pass in case you get all keepers. You don't want to be left with a pair or like numbers because you're going to feed these tiles to your opponents. You build your hand first, then you think about defense. Let's pass these three. You're going to put them in front of your rack because we're going to need those during the optional cross. So we did our first right, and this is our incoming right. We have a seven. If we're collecting six, seven, eight, nine, we could maybe even do five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here we've developed a pair. Anytime you develop a multiple, Multiple is a pair, pung, kong, or quint. Pair, three of a kind, four of a kind, five of a kind. You want to reassess. For a three with a nine and maybe a north, really the only category that we could use both of these would be three, six, nine, but we have a gap, no six. Gap hands should take a lower precedence. So I think I'm going to break that up and keep my options open with north and south with nines or consecutive run. I think maybe we could give up a dragon. Although north and south has a hand with dragons. I don't like passing the white dragon because the white dragon is used as a dragon and a zero. So this is a valuable tile. 
I put this on the same level of value as a flower. So I try not to pass it. Let's give up a seven and keep one suit here and pass these three. So we'll put that in front. We went right. This is the cross pass now. We got another dragon. Here we got a six for that potential three, six, nine. There's a four. This is coming in a little bit. There are, there are hands that use winds and dragons, but they're specific dragons. North and south use red. So we could probably give up the green. Let's pass these three. So we went right across left. Now is when you would, as a matter of fact, we could have passed blind. So for example, let's say I wanted to keep that. And let's say I didn't want to pass that. Although that's not a bad pass. But just for the exer exercise, if I only wanted to pass two, I would pass two. And then from my incoming pass, take one so that it is complete. The key is not to look at it. That's why it's called passing blind. So then I would take two in my hand. In this case, I think we could go ahead and pass these three. So we went right across left. That first left, you can pass blind up to three tiles. We're going to bring in the first left, right across left. Now here we got a nine. That kind of might help us get to that north and south with nines. We also though got a five and multiple formed five. So I think what we could do here is keep the nine. I think we should probably give up on the red dragon and maybe, no, I want to keep that eight for consecutive run. I would keep the nines for the north and south. I think we could go ahead and pass this. Now this is a little bit risky because three, six dragon, let's go ahead and break it up a little bit and pass the white. Passing a white dragon should be done rarely. Sometimes in order to build your own hand, you got to risk it. So that is the second left. Now let's say that I didn't want to pass. The second Charleston is optional. So we could stop the Charleston, but I think we should go ahead and pass. I want more tiles to build my hand. So we're going to keep going. So there's the second left. We're going to bring in our second left. We got a flower and a north. We got a nine. North and south with nines. We don't need the flowers though. I don't pass flowers. So north and south with nines or north and south with dragons. Either way, we don't need the flowers. Let's break up the five and focus on north and south with nines. So that we went right across left, left across. Now we're going to get our cross pass. We got another flower. And here now we have a two, four, five. I'm not going to pass a flower. That should be done very, very rarely. I think what I would do here is pass a two five, because if we pass that, that's very risky. I would pass one blind so that at least I'm only giving two tiles in one suit and they're pretty far apart. So we're going to pass one blind. And I'll just take one from my incoming pass and add it so that my opponent gets a full pass and we get these two. A west and a seven. Not helpful. So let's pass these three for our optional cross. We could pass up to three as long as your opponent matches 
the lowest number of tiles. If I only wanted to pass two, they would only have to pass two. They could also decline. The optional cross is optional. We got the five back. So in the end for this exercise, we ended up with one particular hand north and south with pairs of nines in the middle. So obviously we need a nine bam, a nine crack, because those are pairs. We're going to have to draw those ourselves. And then we need south winds or dragons to complete this. We have three flowers we do not need. Now, if we happen to get the red dragons back, we could maybe play north and south with dragons, which uses two flowers. So I think I would hold at least two of the flowers and get rid of one. I would discard these first and see what happens. The other thing that we could consider is like numbers with nines and discard these two. So I would hold all these. Phase one, the Charleston. You can master the Charleston if you practice at home. If you don't have any tiles, there's a link below the video to where you can get a set. The intent of the Charleston is to exponentially build your hand in up to seven passes, three tiles each. If you make the right decisions, you can set yourself up for success going into phase two, picking and discarding. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to set up for a game. Then I'll show you what it looks like to do the Charleston with four players. Finally, we'll play through the pick and discard phase of the game. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click that little gray bell afterwards so that you get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.